Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. May 16th, 2024. Let's get into it. Before we get started on watching the world burn video, I wanted to direct you over to my channel on Rumble called Outdoors with Kirk. One of the problems that I've had on Rumble, you know, cause it's a, it was, a, they're getting better. They're getting better and better. It's still under development. I mean, it'll always be under development, but I mean, there's, they got the primitive. Now I, what I can do is I uploaded a lot of hiking videos on Rumble as that cybersecurity guy, and there was no way to reclassify them. The only way that I could do it was to delete the video from that cybersecurity guy and then upload it again to Outdoors with Kirk. And I did that with a few hiking videos, but it just took way too much time because I have to go and you know, find the video at that cybersecurity guy, and then I had to go through my backups on my computers at home and try to find the video and then re-upload. I mean, it was, I finally just gave up on it. Well, now they've got a pull down where I can change the classification of the video, but I'm not sure it's working completely because when I went to Rumble, I just uploaded a hiking video about a week ago on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, and I uploaded it to Rumble, Outdoors with Kirk, by the way, is the channel. Outdoors with Kirk, all one word on Rumble. And uh, anyway, I couldn't couldn't find the hiking video. And this happens to me from time to time. And what I always end up having to do is re-upload the video, you know, and just cut and paste everything in there. And then the video suddenly appears. So I'm not sure this pull-down box is working, but I will go back. And if it really does start working... I'll reclassify all those hiking videos, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, if you want to go to Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble, that'd be a great place, because those are all just hiking videos. There's no intermix of, uh, of my geopolitics or watching the world burn videos. It's all just, uh, you know, because on, on YouTube we have categories. On Rumble it's channels. I like the channel idea better. Now I could have opened another channel on uh, YouTube, it's just I already had that cybersecurity guy and they got me so censored it's unbelievable anyway. <laughs> so, so what was the point, you know? But uh, anyway, go check it out. First story I wanted to talk about was uh, just a continuation from my last watching the world video was uh, how the uh, when the Russians came across up in the north, they were expecting some pretty massive defenses. Uh, we spent billions and billions of dollars <laughs> to put defenses in uh, northern Ukraine. Turns out there wasn't any defenses. <laughs> the oligarchs stole all the money. I mean, Ukraine, we keep giving them billions and they keep stealing it all. I don't even understand it. I, you know, I would think that the American people would rise up and, you know, protest that. Maybe the kids need to come up with something besides Palestine protest, you know. So that, uh, but the reason why I wanted to get into that was, you know, I don't, I don't know if you knew, Putin uh, landed in China. I think it was yesterday. might have been today. Anyway, they <laughs> I swear that guy gets treated like a rock star everywhere he goes, man. Check this video out of him landing in China. Wasn't that incredible? <laughs> I mean, the red carpet and the, all of the Chinese there and everything. Oh my God, I mean.
when Blinken showed up, just in contrast, the only person that met him was the ambassador, <laughs> the U.S. ambassador. I mean, there wasn't even a Chinese. I think there might have been one Chinese official there to might have even shook his hand. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and find that Blinken video, but it was pretty insulting. They didn't they didn't care. And of course, I don't know if you saw the video where Xi's pacing back and forth, and he goes, "When's this Blinken gonna go back home?" You know, and and they posted the video, <laughs> so you know that wasn't my accident. I mean, no way, no how. So anyway, the uh, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first. Was uh, talking about Ukraine and uh, how the Russians are advancing. You know, so the oligarchs. I mean, when you think about it, they're slitting their own throats. You know, by not building those defenses, they brought about the demise of Ukraine so much faster. Yeah, that's that's what greedy people don't really understand. It's their own greed that results in their own downfall. Now, is it, is it going to be a real downfall for them? No, they'll just they'll just move on to uh, you know their their mansion down in Cyprus or or go someplace else, you know, or something like that. But uh, but still, they're going to have to abandon uh, Ukraine, you know. So what they had in Ukraine because they had a good deal, you know. So now what are they going to do for money? I guess. Uh, I don't know, I, well, when you got millions of dollars in the bank, I guess you can just earn your interest and you'll be all right. So that was the first story. Uh, the next one came out of North Carolina of all places. <laughs> I was like, no way. So because they can't stand the students protesting for free Palestine or a Palestinian state, they, uh, they, they're they passing a bill that you can't wear a mask. <laughs> Remember when they had... All the Democrat states said you had to wear a mask. And Fachi, that freaking idiot, that little short troll that should be in jail. That son of a gun, I don't know why he's still free. But someday maybe he'll get up, end up in jail. I don't know. It doesn't seem like anybody that breaks the law ever goes to jail in the United States as long as you're of the elite class, correct? You know, Merrick Garland, you know, they even impeached him. He, he's not going to. And, of course, now the attorney general, uh, I can't, yeah, Merrick Garland. Anyway, he's, uh, he's under contempt for Congress. So I wanted to get to another story. This was out of Redacted yesterday. And uh, I encourage you to go back and watch that video. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, it was, it was a great episode. I tell you what, Redacted, I get a lot of information from them. You know, and you don't want to steal from other people too much. But this was a guy, uh, he's right on top of what's going on with the... Uh, with the the government and what he says is that we don't have a government it's the uh, non-governmental organizations that own all of Congress and all of the executive branch and uh, I believe that you know and the NGOs are the ones that are bringing all the illegal aliens into the country uh, and he estimated that we're at about 10 million right now and about three quarters of those are young men and uh, they're spending he said well the figure he gave was a trillion dollars that uh, they spent because they're putting them up in, the, in fancy hotels and everything else and I imagine they're probably equipping them with arms so we've got an invasion going on in the United States I have a feeling that uh, ten, well, 10 million soldiers so you figure well if it's uh, three quarters so you got 700,000 soldiers right now in the United States that uh, you know if they equip them and arm them which they probably are because he was also talking about how there's compounds where they've got the fences up completely around them so they're probably given a military train behind those walls now I don't understand where the US military is on all this I guess the entire uh, Pentagon has been captured also I mean what the hell it's kind of crazy so let's uh, let's watch a little bit of that redacted video right now you know, this story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. You better pay attention. Wake up, America, as to what is happening right now. The more we learn about it, the more troubling it is. The United States government working hand-in-hand -hand with non-governmental organizations, NGOs, to bring millions of illegal immigrants into the United States. If you don't think this is all planned, then you need to get your head examined. Nothing happens by coincidence. This is all part of a massive operation. J.J. Carroll is a 24-year veteran of the Customs and Border Protection. And what he's just uncovered as part of his new documentary called Treason is just astonishing. J.J. has been kind enough to send me dispatches of the documentary as they are filming this. And it's just jaw-dropping. Speaking with sources at these NGOs who don't want their face on camera, they don't want their voices 
on camera either. Um, they are te- what they're telling JJ is just shocking. Listen. It was Jewish Family Services, and then you had Jewish Family Services who also had these underlying NGOs under them, whether it be Lutheran Family Services, Catholic Family Services, you know, and then all these different family services, it, but they all, they all have the same parent company. So you would pay Jewish Family Services, and then they would pay the Jewish Family Services. All of the subcontractors, but they all have the same pay for the most part. That is going to be uncovered the next several years is the partnership between NGOs and the federal government and the tune of tens of billions of dollars, if not hundreds of billions of dollars after this four year term of Biden's over. So you were just, you don't have to tell us the location because we don't want to give away any sources of who you spoke with, who obviously didn't want their face on camera. Um, but you went into this, I think, with some ideas about how these NGOs were operating, right? These non-governmental organizations, there's thousands of them that are ferreting individuals across the border and then dispersing them across the United States, a lot of them with funding from the United States government. But when you set foot into these interviews, did it stun even you or did you already know all of these things? No, it did stun me. If I, I'm, I'm being completely honest, I had a very good idea of what was going on, what was transpiring. But when you talk to people that are inside those meetings, so the individual that I talked to was a DHS employee. He was the guy that cut the checks to the NGOs. And he's telling me, he's laying it out for me about what this looks like. He cut checks to Jewish Family Services, Catholic Charities, and a couple other. And I said, tell me about, just give me an example. And he goes, okay, Jewish Family Services, let me explain how this works. The Jewish Family Services, I said, tell me, tell me the amount, okay, before you get started. He said, six hundred million dollars, and I said, okay, was that two or three years contract? He goes, no, that was like two, three to six months max, wow. max. And then he said, what was really stunning to me is this is where the money laundering scheme comes in. So he goes, you have Jewish Family Services at the top. He says they have. 50, so let's just say 50 to 100 subcontractors underneath him. After I give them, he's telling me, after I cut that check for $600 million, then those smaller subcontractors that are responsible for food, clothing, housing, whatever that $600 million does not cover or did not cover enough, those subcontractors call us and say, we need 10 million here, we need 5 million here. And I say, well, do you vet it? Do you? He goes, no, we're in emergency mode. So we cut the checks immediately to him. Immediately. And he says, but here's where, this is where it gets crazy, JJ. He said, when I cut the checks to the subcontractors, I'm cutting the check to the same payee. I'm sending the same funds to Jewish Family Services, the same account. So you have Jewish Family Services getting $600 million dollars. But you have 50 to 100 subcontractors that I'm paying, but I'm paying to the same bank account is Jewish Family Services. It's all a lie. It's, it's just all a lie. And I said, okay, well, you, you cut $600 million check. Are you now tracking that to check? And he goes, listen, you have to understand, JJ, nobody's following the money. No one cares. He says, you have to understand the federal government created a chaotic situation on the border. You have millions of people coming to the border. The Border Patrol, DHS, CBP, FEMA, no one has the resources, manpower, to move millions of people from the border into America. That's where the NGOs come in. The NGOs are the the movement of people and goods into America. That is the evil partnership between the government and the NGOs. Did he give you a sense, because we have a segment coming up here tonight, we're going to talk about the United Nations and their collaboration on all of this and bringing in military-age men. Did he he give you a sense of why most of these people that you've been been seeing, of course, on camera are military-age men between the ages of 25, 35 years old? Um, You know, I think people out there think this idea of this, like, replacement theory, that just sounds like a conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Or the militarization of the United States, a sort of, a, sort of a United Nations army, inside the United Nation, inside the United States and Europe, to carry out mm-hmm. plans for lockdowns, whatever it is. You know, did he give you a sense of why they all seem to be the same 
same 25 to 35 year olds and they're all men? He did as well as many other investigative journalists that I have contacts with and my sources. They all believe that this is a military style invasion. Let me just tell you how this looks to us. When you attack a nation, you attack from multiple points of entry. You don't attack, this is not the Middle Ages where I'm attacking the moat and the, and the drawbridge. I'm attacking multiple areas. So once you do that, you attack multiple areas, you make the inroads into America. Now, the United States government, who I believe is the enemy of our people, has already created the pathways, the highways, the, 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 the routes for the invasion to, to go into middle America. So you don't invade a nation and just stay on our borders. You advance, you keep advancing. So when people are talking about the military age adult males that are pouring into our country, understand that they're anywhere from 50 to 70% of the total illegal population coming into America. We've been sold this lie that's family units and babies and kids. Yes, there are that, but the single adult military age men are in the millions, tens of millions in America. You're looking at, it's, you, you, you mentioned this perfectly, it's happening in Europe. Nothing happens in the world by happenstance. There's no willy-nilly, well, this is just how it's happened. It just happens that there's tens of millions of illegal middle, middle military age adult men pouring into, from the Southern Hemisphere, pouring into the Northern, excuse me, the Western nations of the world. It's not by happenstance. And when you, it's hard. I know it's hard to hear somebody say the federal government is doing this. And it's hard to say, it's hard to comprehend what the manifestation of this will be. But it will be devastation and destruction. And I always ask this question, Clay. If you do not agree with my conclusion, if you do not agree with my analysis, then tell me why the federal government under Joe Biden has brought in 30 million illegal aliens into our country. And no one can answer that. No, and I used to think, honestly, I used to think it was just focused on the election. Uh, I don't anymore. I think it's much bigger than that. And I think you're seeing the P, I think you're, what you're doing, this amazing work, is starting to really pull back the strings on this, pull back the curtain on this, and uncover a massive plot that I don't even think we fully understand how big this is. Um, when you talk about the thousands of NGOs that are operating and delivering these people around the country, can you talk about some of the mechanisms? Did your sources at the DHS and otherwise tell you, you know, how much money they're being given? What sort of tools and, and access these people are being given? Is there any sort of follow-up at all from the NGOs, from the Department of Homeland Security? Are they following up with monthly, weekly checks to make sure that they haven't killed somebody, they haven't raped somebody, they haven't, you know, gotten DUIs? What sort of things do they, do they, are they be, you know, the tools and things are they, are they being given? Okay, that's a great question. So I asked him that. I said, what, what does it look like? And he said, before I start to explain this, JJ, I want you to understand the federal government does not run the NGOs. The NGOs run our federal government. And I said, okay, well, explain that to me, clarify that. He said, you have to understand, we are in a chaotic emergency situation on the border. Tens of millions of people are crossing. Anywhere from 10 to 15,000 a day are still pouring across. The mechanism needed to move these people from the border into the interior is paramount. So the federal government does whatever the NGOs want and ask and demand for. He goes, we're buying with, the NGOs are buying with our money, brand new buses, buying uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz vans, $100,000, $150,000. They're paying nurses. One nurse, we documented in, in one of the videos I sent you, one nurse made $20,000 a week. A week, not a month, a week, and that's one nurse. So the corruption, okay, let me give you another example. I'll give you two examples. In San Diego, we, we filmed there uh, just recently. Down in San Diego. Wasn't that interesting? So the, the North Carolina thing, I thought that was amazing. They're going to pass a bill that you can't wear a mask. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. Because, uh, you know, for, for so many, for a couple of years, you got to wear a mask. You got to wear, I never wore no damn mask. Let me just put it that way. So I knew, I, at least I did things right. All right, the next story is uh, Florida. DeSantis keeps going on all thrusters, man. He's got uh, a new bill, and I think it passed. 
that we're eliminating climate change from our uh, any legislation that we have here in the United States. Of course, the leftist lunatics at the Sierra Club are bringing up a lawsuit that's saying we have to, you have to consider climate change. You have to consider climate change. Anyway, I, I in my opinion, climate change is a hoax. Uh, I'm sure that we are affecting this planet and there's a lot of things like blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. That probably wasn't a good idea. Where is the climate change uh, people on that? Huh? They didn't say a damn thing about the fact that the Biden administration blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, one of the biggest ecological disasters in the history of the world. And nobody says anything, but when we eliminate climate change from our uh, constitution, or not constitution, but from legislation here in Florida, they're going to cry all about it. Oh my God, these people are so hypocritical. It blows my mind. The other one is, uh, and I always liked Marsha Blackburn, but now you got the right trying to censor people just like the left was trying to censor people. So she's put up a bill, and I'm not sure if it's passed yet or not, but they, they want the uh, you know, platforms like X and uh, you know whatever that, to, to change their algorithms so that they can go out and get any grooming videos off of the platform. You know that's damn impossible. People are posting all kinds of tweets and everything all day long. You know, you can't, that's why there's a free speech platforms. You can't police it. It's up to the damn parents to take care of that stuff. If you don't want your kids on X, don't let them go on X. If you don't want them on TikTok, don't let them go on TikTok. We don't need a government to protect us from this stupid stuff that because all they all this is about is eliminating free speech. That's all it is. They can't stand our government, our captured government, by the way, not our government. It's somebody else's government because you know uh, Colonel McGregor calls them donors. I, I like the, the, what the guy said and redacted. NGOs own the government. And who are these non-governmental organizations? Well, we know Soros is one of them, but that's, uh, he, he doesn't have enough money to capture the whole government. Probably some foreign nations are funding it. Money coming out of Brussels, probably. Uh, you know, who knows? Maybe even the Chinese. Well, there's a lot of Chinese here in the United States that have been brought in on those uh, planes. So imagine, could be the Chinese government. And then there was another stupid thing I heard on the radio. They're talking about China, Iran, and Russia interfering in our elections. The only people interfering in our elections are Democrats. They found 300,000, well, they can't find 300,000 ballots in Fulton County, Georgia. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think 300,000 ballots have gone missing when they were subpoenaed? That's the interference in our elections. I ain't worried about damn Iran, Russia, or China. I mean, come on, how stupid can you be? What they, oh, yeah, Russia's good. Russia don't give a shit about the American elections. I can tell you that right now. They're, they're more worried about, you know, cozying up with China. By the way, that was another thing I uh, pointed out, was that 90% now of the transactions between Russia and China are outside the dollar. So they're using their own system. And I imagine that's why he's meeting with Xi. They probably want to get that to 100%. So the world's D dollarization and then I heard that the Biden administration's putting sanctions on a couple more countries. You know that every time you put sanctions on, you're killing the dollar. Well, it's by design. This is the demolition of the United States. I hope you got your jock straps on, because we're in work for a world of hurt. <clears throat> so I decided to go through a couple of my expos. A couple things. Uh, India was one of the nations that uh, was going to get sanctioned, so I'm glad I went through that. So I was talking about how the United States wants to keep sanctioning everybody. Of course, you know we got a 100% tariff on Chinese uh, cars, and then uh, I've been telling you the commercial real estate's going to crash. And uh, Google has announced they're pulling out uh, from their 300,000 square foot building in San Francisco. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> Who wants to be in San Francisco? Uh, I love those poop maps about where you get, where all the poop is in San Francisco. So anyway, so that's uh, just, just something there. The other thing I forgot to tell you was uh, check out the uh, Economic Ninja. It might have been today or yesterday. He did a, um, a video on silver. And it was a good video. Um, what he was talking about was all the, because right now silver is hovering right around $30 an ounce. Um, so do I think it's going to, if it breaks at $30, that could be a threshold. We might not ever see uh, you know, 20 some dollars an ounce ever again, but we'll see. 
But anyway, he was pointing out all the uses for silver. And when you think about it, it is. It's, it's used in purification of water. It's used in uh, all these bombs blowing up in Ukraine. Most of them have silver in them. That's silver that we'll never, ever see again on planet Earth. You know, it's scattered all over the ground. Silver is used in water filtration. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, the, the number one conductive metal, so it's used in electronics, cell phones. Uh, I mean, you name it. Uh, and so it, it is, so he went on about all of the different uses. And, you know, you don't really think about it. It's not just in coins. It's not just uh, considered God's money or currency. It's also used by, in a lot of different places. I might go through a couple more tweets. Me and the dog are taking a break uh, on the hike today. Just thought I'd uh, try to get you up some more news. Just wanted to talk about FICO in uh, Slovakia. Uh, you know that, uh, well, if you don't follow the news, you might not know that he was against the World Economic Forum. He was, he's against the Ukraine war. Uh, he's come out with a lot of statements that goes against the narrative that uh, certainly the CIA and the uh, Western countries, uh, you know, there goes against everything that they want, which is uh, world domination. So anyway, uh, that was, um, how he, I want you to understand, you know, when Reagan got shot, he got off one bullet. And then they jumped in front and, and took him down. That guy got off five bullets. I think it might have been four or five that was a conspiracy because his, his, his um, security team stepped aside and let that happen I want you to take that in that security team was bought off they stepped aside and they let it happen so I don't know if he's going to survive or not but I'm praying for him I think he's a good guy and uh, I think he's doing doing right by his country more than we can say for the politicians here in the United States. Well, I guess you knew that Merrick Garland, tell me he doesn't look like an owl, man. You ever look at that dude? He looks just like an owl to me. But uh, anyway, he came out of hibernation and uh, invoked executive privilege and said that they're not gonna give Congress some of the uh, documents that they subpoenaed about uh, Joe Biden, specifically the, uh, the interview where, uh, of course, Joe would have been judged uh, mentally uh, ill or mentally incompetent. So that's, uh, that's what's going on there. But I just uh, found that interesting that, uh, and of course they uh, said that, you know, he's in contempt of Congress. Now, if you recall Joe Bannon, I mean, uh, is it John Bannon? And, uh, or the other guy, they're in prison now. Those are Trump, uh, Trump appointees. So anyway, peace out, stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.